Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will talk about the quantum computers and algorithmic trading strategies. Hello everybody, my name is Radan Vodko and I'm CEO of Quantpedia. Today we will discuss a very hot topic that's discussed a lot in Blogosphere. And the topic is quantum computers and how you can use the quantum computers in algorithmic trading and portfolio management and etc. Uh, etc. Et quantum computing, here it is how it looks. Yeah, it looks fancy. Uh, now the question is how you can use it and if you can afford it. We have an article on our blog about the quantum computing and this article is a short introduction to the topic with the uh, links to research papers and it contains a lot of useful information and I will go through that uh, article in this uh, video. Uh, the first thing first, uh, what is the quantum computer? How does it differ from the classical one? So firstly to understand the potential of quantum computers we must understand how they are different. In a normal computer we have a basic unit of information which is bit and it can give a value of 0 and 1. So when the computer is doing a task, it works with the strings of 0 and 1. On the other hand, the basic unit of the quantum information in quantum computers is a qubit. It's a really, really different from the classical bit. It doesn't represent a 0, also not 1, but it's a combination of both uh, at once. I know it sounds very strange for all the people who are more interested to understand, I mean, how it works on a deep level. I recommend to go to Wikipedia article about quantum computing or about the qubit, etc. Et but for now, we just need to know that the qubit is a superposition of particle. And uh, what does it mean is that uh, the quantum computers are able to compute some of the task much, much faster than the classical computers because they are able to compute those tasks in a parallel compared to the normal computers that do the task in a series of calculations. The reason for that is because the quantum computer algorithm takes a different approach and it computes tasks through the multi-dimensional space. But yeah, it looks very nice. Of course, there are some problems. <laughs> so firstly, most of the time, the quantum computer overperformance is still formulated as a hypothetical or predictive. So it means the quantum computers at the moment are still in the phase of development. So at the time I'm doing this video, we have the largest superconducting quantum computer from IBM and it has 127 qubits, which is really nowhere near the number that it will take to do something really useful. Uh, for example, we can crack the RSA uh, to 048 protocol, which is used for cryptography and coding, and all of the internet is running on it, but we would need more than 20 million qubits for something like that. It will take some time to do something useful. But that, it's not just the one problem. Uh, there are also other problems. So the quantum computers have to be cooled down to very low temperatures to function properly, which is really, really uh, very hard. And there is another very important problem, and it means that there is no ultimate universal architecture of quantum computers so far, what does it mean that we are able to build quantum computers that can solve some particular task, but they cannot do some, anything other. So it's not like in a classical computer that you can perform any task and build any algorithm. Hardware part of the quantum computer predicates how it will work and you must build it on the hardware layer. So each quantum computer must be built on the hardware layer to solve different tasks. Now, the question is, can we use the quantum computers? I mean, me, you and everybody who is watching the video without, I don't know, millions of dollars. Yeah, it is possible. So the first one, yeah, we can try to buy our own <laughs> quantum computer. So yeah, there, it's possible to buy a desktop quantum computer for just under 5,000. There is a Chinese startup called PinQ. It's selling two qubits desktop quantum computer. Yeah, it's quantum computer is very interesting, but it has only two qubits. So it means it's mainly aimed at schools and college. You may try to familiarize yourself with the concept. You can do some research on it, but with two qubits, you can optimize only portfolio that consists of two assets or I mean, to perform very, 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 very basic calculations. So it's something that's useful for cool. But there are other ways uh, how you can enter the world of quantum computing. So some companies like IBM, Google, D-Wave, uh, they have their quantum computers available through the cloud. And that's much more interesting. So here we have a three different links. So it means you can access quantum computing via the cloud. You can write the quantum code and you can leave the quantum computer to uh, perform the calculation for you. That's much, much better. Uh, you do not need to own the quantum computer, you can just rent it for a, for a short time or short period during which you do the calculation. So that's uh, very, very useful. And there is an, also another way you can use the programming language that simulates the quantum computing, such as uh, Microsoft Azure, Azure Quantum. It's sufficient for some applications. And now the question is, okay, what can we do with the uh, quantum computing? What is the interesting research? 
related to quantum computing, how it's useful in uh, algorithmic trading. So I can recommend you several papers. The first paper is Quantum Computing for Finance, State of Art and Future Prospects. It's a study written uh, by guys from IBM Computing. It's a very nice introduction into quantum computing overall in finance. A detailed article it gives all of the basic information, how it works, what are the processes, what are the optimization problems, uh, machine learning problems, simulation problems that can be used and where the quantum computers can be more uh, useful than classical Monte Carlo algorithms or another algorithm. So that's a very nice intro into quantum computing. But there is another paper that I would like to mention that's even better in my opinion. And it's called uh, Portfolio Optimization of Assistive Stocks Using Classical and Quantum Algorithms. This is the paper that really tries to run a horse race between the classical algorithms for portfolio optimization and um, algorithms that are useful uh, for the quantum computers and they are actually run on uh, quantum computers on those uh, shared cloud-based uh, services that I presented. In this paper, authors compare the classical and quantum approaches to portfolio optimization on a stock on a portfolio with a sixty stock. They compared multiple different methods. Monte Carlo analyzes a genetic algorithm, simulated annealer plus a D-Wave multi-start sampler and D-Wave hybrid samples which are run on a quantum computer and they checked what is the uh, performance of classical and uh, quantum optimization and here are the uh, results in a chart form so what we can see is that the quantum computer so the result from the optimization which are the black dots performs nearly as well as a classic computer here we have also the comparison of the genetic algorithm the quantum computer uh, the red dots and the classic monte carlo algorithm for portfolio optimization. We can see that the quantum computer performs nearly as well as other algorithms. It is possible to use uh, these algorithms and uh, calculate uh, some optimization problems. Some of the problems, uh, the calculation may be even at the moment faster on a quantum computer than on a classical computer. And now it depends what we are trying to achieve by this calculation. So if we are shooting for the speed or we are shooting for the best solution, Etc. Et so this paper probably shows what is the current limit of the quantum computers and how well they perform. So in case you are interested how to use the quantum computing, I would start with the, uh, this paper. It is possible that the quantum computers will improve in the future. There is a lot of research uh, that's running at the moment. Maybe in the next I know, few years, you will get a computer that really, really, really beats classical computers in uh, portfolio optimization. The portfolio optimization is probably the problem that's best suited for quantum computers and there are other problems that are possible to solve on classical computers and in this case uh, the classical computers will be for very very long time better than uh, quantum computers as i said there are still no universal architectures for uh, quantum computers so classical computer will be still better for uh, solving the universal problems there are also another papers that i can recommend the portfolio optimization using the dva quantum annealer and quantum portfolio optimization with investment base and tangible volatility uh, both papers are dealing with the portfolio optimization problems and how you can use the quantum computers in portfolio optimization. Thank you very much. I hope that you liked this video. It was a very quick introduction into quantum computing and how it can help you in uh, algorithmic trading, uh, even at the current state of quantum computers. All of the links are part of the description of this video, so feel free to browse the links and learn something more. And I hope that you will join me next week or in another video. Thank you very much. Interested? Then pick another video to learn more, or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.